A statue has shown in the menu of For Honor, an angelic figure with great wings, holding a scale and a sword. Many of my fans have come asking what I think this means, and I do have a few theories, but nothing concrete. What I do know is that this isn't the first angel to be shown in For Honor, but she is the first to hold scales, which I find marvelously fascinating from a theological perspective. So what I want to do today is talk briefly about angels, as they're mentioned in the Bible, and also use that to talk about what I think this particular angel might mean. The Bible describes angels as immortal and heavenly beings formed by God as his servants, messengers, warriors, and speakers. Throughout the Bible, angels have been sent and commanded to do various tasks. These include acting as messengers for God's children and prophets. In Luke 1.19 it reads, And the angel answered him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I was sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. They are also called to appear before God's children as symbols or as warnings. In Zechariah 5.9 it reads, Then I lifted my eyes and saw and beheld two women coming forward. The wind was in their wings. They had wings like the wings of a stork, and they lifted up the basket between earth and heaven. They are also called to be divine warriors who strike down the enemies of God. Acts 12.23 reads, Immediately an angel of the Lord struck him down because he did not give God the glory and he was eaten by worms and breathed his last. And it's also clear that angels act as God's soldiers, even described by Jesus as being organized into legions. In Matthew 26.53 it reads, Do you think that I cannot appeal to my Father and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? Angelic imagery has been used on churches, cathedrals, and architecture for centuries, and for good reason, as one of the chief jobs of angels in Christian teachings is to be watchers and guardians over God's children. This is mentioned many times in the Bible, most specifically in Psalms 91, 11-12, For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Now angels in the modern context are usually depicted as peaceful creatures, described in Zechariah 5.9 as women with wings like the wings of a stork. However, in the Gothic architecture of the medieval age and renaissance, angels were more commonly depicted as figures of power, reverence, and authority, meant to be feared and respected more than admired for beauty, although they could be quite lovely in appearance too. While we cannot be certain how many angels serve God, we do know that at least a few are mentioned by name in the Bible specifically Gabriel and Michael, who were the two referenced in the canonical Bible most frequently, though the Book of Enoch and the Apocrypha references others and their role specifically, including the seven archangels. But theological lesson aside, who is the angel that we see here on the Ferrana menu screen? Well, that's a good question, but first let's ask another. Who are the angels that we've seen so far in the Ferrana night mats? In the cathedral, the shard, and secluded keep, we see the same angelic statue appearing again and again. A woman wearing robes and holding a sword in one hand and what looks like a tome or tablet in her arm. She has her eyes closed in reverence and her wings outstretched. It's difficult to say exactly who this is as angels holding swords, flaming or otherwise, is quite common in medieval architecture and in art. But the tome she holds leads me to think that this could be the Archangel Uriel. While not mentioned in the canonical Bible, Uriel is mentioned in the Book of Enoch and the Apocrypha. Uriel's name means God is my light, or fire of God. He's considered the angel of light, knowledge, and wisdom, who offers insights and knowledge and understanding to those who seek it, hence why he is seen carrying a totem, book, or scroll most of the time. Though the apocryphal books are considered non-canon, since they frequently contradict known biblical records and have a lack of divine conception in their writing, it is entertaining to read how the texts describe the angels within it. For example, Uriel is considered one of the seven archangels who lamented the fall of man and were tasked by God to watch over the earth. Uriel is one of the four archangels who guard the four corners of the globe, Uriel himself guarding the south. It's also attributed that Uriel was the angel who took part in the Passover in Egypt, checking that the Hebrews put blood over their doors. And in the painting Virgin by the Rocks by Leonardo da Vinci, it is believed that the angel in the painting is Uriel, who, according to the Apocrypha, was the angel who ferried John the Baptist and his mother to safety during King Herod's first child execution edict. In the scenes where we see Uriel in For Honor, she is often placed near a tomb or altar of some sort, except in the case of the Shard, where she's placed at a fork between zones B and A. Perhaps with the tomb locations, Uriel is offering wisdom and comfort for those who have come to mourn the lost individuals. 
And in the case of the Shard, maybe she's offering wisdom in determining which direction to turn. It's hard to say, but I do like the touch, and it's kind of entertaining to see. But, okay, back to the original question. The angel on the For Honor menu is not quite the same as what we've seen with Yuriel, right? This angel does not carry a tome or a kind of tablet like Yuriel does. She carries a sword and a set of scales. And at first you might think she's meant to be Lady Justice, who's depicted as a blindfolded woman holding a set of scales and a sword outside of a house of justice. The idea behind Lady Justice is that justice is blind and that your actions will be weighed in a court of law. But this is an angel, not Lady Justice. So what angel was Lady Justice inspired from? Believe it or not, this angel is another archangel. The Archangel Michael, one of the only angels mentioned by name in the Bible and a commander of God's army. It must be made clear here that Michael is not the leader of God's army. That role is God's alone, but he is depicted as a commander or general of sorts, indicating he carries a high rank among the angels, though he is still subservient to the Lord. Michael is mentioned in the book of Jude, the book of Daniel, and the book of Revelation. It is in Revelation in which his role is made most manifest. Revelations 12, 7 through 9. Now war arose in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back, but he was defeated, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent who was called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. Because of this, Michael is often depicted as a warrior holding a sword or spear, slaying a dragon or a demon. For it is written that Michael will strike down Satan in the final battle. Now in the book of Jude, it is also written, Jude 1, 9. But when the archangel Michael, contending with the devil, was disputing about the body of Moses, he did not presume to pronounce a blasphemous judgment, but instead said, The Lord rebuke you. Again, Michael is portrayed here as an enemy or combatant of Satan. In this case, it comes from a Jewish account that after Moses was buried, the devil wanted to exhume Moses' body for his own purposes, but Michael interfered and the two had a fight over Moses. What's interesting here is that Michael did not belittle Satan or slander him. He merely rebuked him, which indicates that Michael has a code of honor and integrity, even for one as awful as Lucifer. Now, he's undoubtedly a warrior, and the medieval church often referred to him as a saint, as he was one to be prayed to before going into battle that Michael and his battalion of angels would be with them in the fight. But, of course, the question must be asked, if he's such an awesome warrior, what's with the scales? What does the scales have to do with Michael? Well, this is never mentioned in the Bible, but Archangel Michael is often depicted in medieval architecture and art as holding scales, as he is an angel that supposedly is meant to weigh the souls. Inspired by the ancient Egyptian and Greek traditions, it was shown in medieval art that Michael would weigh the souls of men and determine whether they are worthy of salvation. This is very different from Lady Justice, as in her case, she is weighing the actions of the guilty against the law. But in the case of Michael, he is weighing sinful hearts against God's divinity. If one who is weighed down by sin is found wanting, they are denied entry into heaven. And as Michael is the guardian of righteousness and a defender against evil, he will not abide wickedness. Now I want to note here, this is not biblically accurate, and it is not an angel's place to judge souls, but the Lord's place only. However, medieval artists and Renaissance artists took a lot of inspiration from the Greek and Egyptian mythologies in designing their pieces, which is likely why they did what they did in this case. So, I guess that all comes down to the last question we need to ask. Why is Michael here? What does this angel mean for what's coming to For Honor? I mean, there are of course theories. Perhaps something like a Judgment Day is coming to Heathmore. Perhaps the Knights are preparing an all-out offensive. Maybe a rework for Lawbringers coming. Or perhaps it has something to do with that scribe prophecy about a day coming in which Heathmore citizens are, are enslaved, chained, and wailing. Perhaps this statue is indicating that a coming of justice is coming for those who suffer. It would be really cool if we actually had something like a Knight Legion wanting to rise up and put an end to the war once and for all, and perhaps they're calling on the Archangel Michael to see them to victory. Or perhaps a Warden or a Lawbringer is beseeching Michael to bring justice to those who suffer under Horkos or because of this overall war. It would actually be really awesome to see the Knights have a spiritual center for once. All I hope is that it's not another demonization of the Knights and the Church for the sake of expediency. But frankly, we just don't know. I'm very excited to see what's coming here. I'm very interested in this uh, connection. And while I'm sorry I can't give a direct 
um, full on answer as to what it means. I hope that you enjoyed this all the same, and I hope you learned a little bit something new about the angels we've seen in Honor and about angels in Christian iconography literature and architecture if you enjoyed the video let me know down in the comment section below let me know what you think this angel this uh, archangel michael statue means and what you think it could be referencing and i will see you in my next video take care i am a servant of god an agent of divine punishment on earth i'm called upon to cut away the flesh of infidels and remove from the earth all those who would defy God. Hey! Hey!